All right, last time we were talking about change of state, going from, for example, a solid that gains energy or heat and melts to become a liquid, and it allows the atoms to move around more freely, and then a liquid gaining more energy, and eventually uh, where they can break loose, the atoms can break loose, or molecule can break loose, and begin uh, bouncing around as a gas, and that's evaporation or boiling. Um, now, sometimes you may have noticed that it takes a while, particularly say you're boiling water and you're waiting for it. To, it seems like it's right about 99 degrees, almost, maybe even 100. And it's just not quite, though, it hasn't started boiling. And some say, well, why does it take that much longer? So it never wants to uh, boil. A watch pot never boils, okay? That's where that expression came from. But uh, it has to do with two things. One, there's the uh, at different places, okay? The heat of fusion, all right? The heat of fusion has to do with melting or freezing, okay? And the heat of fusion says, basically, when a solid is getting ready to melt, once it gets to the proper temperature, the melting point, say uh, zero degrees uh, Celsius or water, it, t it, has to, it has to gain an extra 332 joules per gram of water or 79.4 calories, same thing, this measure, measure of heat and calories or joules, joules being energy, calories is heat in particular, um, before it will actually melt, okay? Now, that's some, but that's not a whole lot. However, when it gets over here and becomes a, going from a liquid to a gas, that's a bigger change, okay? Uh, from a solid to liquid, yes, the atoms can move for a little bit more and stuff, but they're still kind of contained within liquid. But now you're talking about gas where they're completely free, bouncing all over. And in order to reach that, they have to do reach the heat of vaporization, which means that once it gets to that point, then it has to collect an additional 2,256 joules per gram or 500 and roughly 40 calories per gram, much, much more than heat diffusion, before it will actually boil. And that's why boiling, sometimes it seems like it gets to the right temperature, it's ready to boil, but it just takes a long time. And that's why it's trying to gain this extra heat of vaporization, uh, vaporization to uh, reach the point where it can actually change state from one to another. Now, um, if a solid would have to gain the heat of fusion in order to become a liquid, a liquid have to, would have to lose that much heat in order to become a solid. Okay, the same thing over here with heat of, heat of vaporization. Um, all right, uh, a liquid would have to gain that much heat. Um, gas would have to lose that much heat. Okay, if you had water vapor in the air, it would have to lose this much heat before it could become a liquid and condense on the outside of your glass. Next thing we want to talk about are physical and chemical properties. Uh, the physical properties of an object are uh, just physical characteristics that you can see and observe through your senses, um, usually by uh, taste, uh, smell, uh, by seeing it, by feeling it, the texture. Uh, could be density, how heavy is it? Um, that's a characteristic of the uh, property. It's hardness, or if we're talking about minerals, uh, color uh, would be an obvious one. And all these are just characteristics of a uh, physical characteristics, what it looks like, acts like, feels like, and so forth. Okay, so for example, gold, is it opaque? Can you see through it? Well, then it would be opaque. You cannot see through it. Its color is a yellowish gold color that we associate with gold. And at room temperature, it would be a solid, okay? And its density is extremely dense at 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter or millimeter, milliliter, excuse me. And so that would be some characteristics. Yeah, a diamond, on the other hand, is transparent. It's colorless. Uh, although sometimes there may be impurities that give it certain colors, your blue diamonds or yellow diamonds or something like that. Uh, it's a solid at room temperature, has a density of 3.8 grams per milliliter, and it is extremely hard, one of the hardest substance known to man. Not saying it can't be crushed, but if you were to try to scrape things with it, it would scratch most other objects. Uh, and last, in water is transparent. Uh, it's also colorless, and but it is a liquid at room temperature, and its density is 1.0 grams per milliliter. So you can see that. Now, these have things in common, but they're different based on their physical properties. And, and anytime we're looking at things and trying to classify them, it's usually done on their physical properties, what we can actually see and observe um, directly like that. Uh, now, chemical properties are a little harder to see because they're not things that we can just obviously see. But a chemical property would be something that affects a substance's ability to react with other substances. In other words, how does it react with other things? Does it change that? Okay. Um, 
and these would be considered physical changes. Um, now, um, how well, how reactive a chemical is, for example, the number of electrons on the outside layer, which we'll talk about later, which determines what kind of charge it would have and what it would react with. Um, certain things that might cause it to react, uh, the pH changes pH, um, or, or is it an acid or a base, and some of these characteristics are more related to this chemical properties and how it would affect or react with other chemicals. Okay, and uh, and in line with that, we have what we call physical changes versus chemical changes. And chemistry is basically all about changes. How do things change? And so uh, we try to change things into different one metal into a different kind of metal or uh, one substance into a different kind of substance. If it contains metal, for example, iron ore is not iron. It may be iron oxide or some other compound with iron combined with it. We need to get the iron away from that. So we're trying to figure out a way to chemically change it from a compound containing iron into just pure iron. All right, and so um, these are some of the kind of things we need to do. And so uh, physical changes are changes that um, basically change some of the physical properties, but it does not change what chemicals are present. Okay, uh, for example, if I were to take water, okay, and it begin and if and I begin to freeze it, once it freezes, it changes some th properties. For example, it forms this lattice thing, which makes it bigger, takes up more volume, therefore it's less dense. That's why ice is less dense and will float in water. But if you look at the actual water molecules, uh, we've got an oxygen with two hydrogens and over here. We still have an oxygen with two hydrogens stuck on it. And so the water molecules are still the same molecules. If you have a um, thermometer with mercury in it, and you have uh, mercury atoms at uh, so 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, about room temperature in the 70s, and we heat it up to 100 degrees Celsius, boiling water, the mercury atoms are moving faster and have spread farther apart, but they are still mercury atoms, and they have not changed from the mercury atoms they were before. It's still the same chemicals <clears throat> that are present. And so the bottom line is a physical change is a change in which you still, it may change some of the physical properties, what it looks like, its density, uh, but it's basically still the same substances. Chemical changes, on the other hand, now have a new chemical present that wasn't there before. And that's basically the definition of a chemical change is different substances are bounded to each other or they are no longer bound to each other or ones that were not bound to each other now are. So uh, they've changed from elements to compounds, uh, from compounds to elements, or they've kind of changed from compounds into different compounds, but they're completely new and different things. Now, sometimes it is difficult just by looking at one to tell the difference, okay? And I've got to give kudos to the guy in your book. This is one of the first books that actually said that. Uh, a lot of other books I've read just makes them, well, you're an idiot if you can't tell just by listening to something if it's a physical or chemical change. Now there are some things that are pretty easy. Uh, changes in state, okay, uh, when water changes from a solid ice, melts to a liquid, or changes to a water vapor, it's still water, okay. So anytime something just melts or um, evaporates, it's still the same substance that it was before that happened, so that is always going to be a physical change. Now, that should not be confused with heating if it burned. If it burned, catches on fire, if you will, now you're adding oxygen. Anytime you burn something, you're adding oxygen to it. Uh, so, for example, if it speaks steel wool and you heat it up and burn it, it will rust and it will form iron oxide. Okay. Now it's a new substance. Okay. It's completely different. Uh, if I take a piece of paper and I rip it up into little pieces, that would be a physical change. That's still the same chemicals making up. I'm just tearing them into little pieces. But on the other hand, if I light it with a match, now that is a chemical change because there's smoke coming off. There's black carbon or ashes that are left behind. Uh, it's completely new chemicals. They've been rearranged into new substances. Now, the difference is, though, or what, how, to, how to make it tell them apart, I said sometimes it's hard to say, um, physically or generally, um, reversible. 
if you make conditions like they were before, they will change. For example, water freezing. Well, you, the temperature has changed. And therefore, if you heat it back up, it will melt and go back to the other direction. Okay, and so most physical changes are fairly um, reversible. Now, if I rip up the piece of paper, I can kind of tape it together, but it never goes quite back to how it was before I tore it up. Okay, but I, I can kind of put it back together. All right, on the other hand, if I burn the piece of paper, paper I can't take the smoke that came off of it and the water vapor that came off of it and the ashes and put them together and make a new piece of paper very well. And so, in general, chemical changes are difficult to reverse and, and make them like they were. Physical changes tend to be easier to change back to how they were before you um, caused the, the change. All right, now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the periodic table. Uh, the periodic table, like I said, is not something we feared. It is our friend. It tells us a lot of information and a whole little bit of uh, space. It's kind of like our own separate little cheat sheet that tells us a bunch of stuff and if we know how it works then it's actually like I said our friend because it can tell us a lot of information in a very small amount of space and that's what we like to see. Now um, one of the biggest things about the periodic table is it is divided into two main groups. Uh, if we drew a little stair step starting with boron and going like, like this all the way down the uh, thing here between aluminum, silicon, germanium, and arsenic um, to, uh, antimony and tellurium, selenium, and actinium. All right, if we go down this little stair step right here, this is the dividing line, kind of like the Mason Dixon line is north and south, and the equator is the north hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. This is the dividing line. All right, everything on this side of the line, which remember includes these two down here because they really go up here. So all these two rows here and all these other ones here are the metals. All right, so uh, metals are the majority of the elements on the periodic charge. You can see they greatly outweigh the rest of them, which are over here. Okay, now the ones on this side are the non-metals. All right, and so basically we have the metals on this side. We have the non-metals on the opposite side. Very few, relatively speaking, nonmetals. Not saying that they're any less important. In fact, if anything, they're going to be more common because they're going to combine with the metals, and these are the only ones the metals can combine with. Okay? Now, um, there, as you come over this way, then, these are the ones that are the most metallic. All right? As you get over this direction, they become less metallic until eventually you come over here, and they're now nonmetals. All right? So, these are the strongest metals. Sodium is extremely metallic. If it is put in water, it will almost is almost explosive. It reacts so violently, it will catch on fire. Um, most of the metals that we think of, nickel, iron, copper, zinc, uh, silver, gold, uh, lead is over here, tend to be over in this direction, the less reactive because the the really metallic ones are so reactive they just are almost impossible to use as a pure metal. So most of the ones we think about are over here. Now as you get closer and closer to the non-metals then, these ones that touch are considered kind of borderline metals, okay? They're not they're not real metals, okay? And so they're kind of like metals, but they're almost they are also on the dividing line. There are um what we call metalloids. In other words, they're kind of half metal, half non-metal. Okay, they're kind of in between. All right, and so uh, the ones over here, the metals, are good conductors of heat and electricity. They are very malleable, which means they can be flattened out into sheets, like a lot of metals can. Ductile, which means they can be pulled into wires. They tend to be solids. There are some exceptions. Mercury, Hg over here, mercury is a... Uh, a liquid at room temperature, uh, but most of them are solid and uh, they are very good conductors of things like that. Okay, now we're going to talk about the rest of non metals, are basically not all of those things. They're poor conductors of heat, they are brittle if they're solids, and if not, they may actually be gases. Okay, we'll talk more about those in the next video.